Hi, it's time for another math easy solution. Turn to discuss further into applications of integrals and look further into moments of center, centers of mass. And now look at example five, which basically shows how we can apply the theorem of Pappus, which, which I covered in my last video, which basically connected uh, centers of mass with volumes of revolution. And this is a pretty interesting example right here. It states, a torus is formed by rotating a circle of radius r about a line in the plane of the circle that is a distance capital R which is greater than r from the center of the circle and it says find the volume of the torus. Uh, basically all this wording simply means if we had again it's a line in the plane of the circle so if we had a line like this or oh, I'll just draw it in dashed lines. So you have a line, let's say you had a line like this, and now we have a circle on this side, so it's on the plane, just means on the same XY um, XY coordinate system. So it's in the same 2D um, uh, system. So we have a circle like this with the radius R. So let's draw this radius across this way, R, and now this line, so when we rotate this circle about this line, and this line is a distance that is r from the center of the circle. So this full length here is r, and this is obviously greater than the small r. So this circle is completely on one side of the line. And now when we rotate it, what shape we get is something that looks like yeah, it looks like it's pretty much a ring. I'll just draw this around first. Draw this in red. I'll uh, reflect this across here. And it looks something. I'll draw the dashed line for this circle. Just to uh, basically just to reflect this onto this side. And then when we draw this in 3D, we get a shape. It's just a bit hard to draw this. I'll draw this side up top. So what we end up getting is a 3D shape like this. I'll draw this. I'll fill this one out. Let's just draw it a bit neater. Or let's just say something like that. Anyways, and now we got, I'll just draw this, try to shade it in like it's 3D. So it's pretty much a donut. A torus here is just a donut. You just have a circle and you just rotate this across. So we get a 3D shape like this that has a volume V. Yeah, now we're asked to solve the volume of this torus. And uh, what we could use is the theorem of Pappas, which I went over in my last video, to quickly solve this because it's the same form as that theorem. And in a later video, I'll show that it's you could solve this using integrals, but it'll be much, much more tedious than just applying the theorem. So basically, recall, just to recap, the theorem of Pappas in my last video. It's a really surprising connection and a pretty interesting theorem. So theorem Pappas states that the volume of this, um, this uh, volume, this shape of revolution or this volume of revolution that we obtain when we rotate this region about this line is equal to the area times the distance. So A times D, where A is the area of the region we're rotating, area of the region. In, in our case, it's the circle, in our case. And basically D, well, A is the area. A equals to area. Let's write this a bit neater. Yeah, just write it neater like this. Where A is the area of the region that we're rotating to get the shape, which is the circle. And D is, is the distance uh, traveled here. This is an interesting one. Traveled by the centroid of the region. So this is the yeah the centroid of the region, and as I explained in my earlier video, uh, it's basically when we look at this shape here, it's a circle, it's a perfect circle. So then the centroid is the center of the circle. So centroid is the center. 
of a circle of a let's write this meter of the circle in this case and this is again by symmetry by the principle of symmetry which I covered earlier by symmetry here I'll try it like that like I explained in my earlier video basically by this is by symmetry we could find out where the center of mass is of a shape like a rectangle or square is going to be the center so if this is the centroid and D is the distance traveled by the centroid of the region as we rotate about this line. Actually, I'll just draw this fill of this line, actually, because we drew it in red, so it won't be too distracting. So that means this, if we look at the centroid here and just rotate this all the way across, like that. This is the distance D traveled about it. So I'll write this somewhere here. So this, this, this is distance D. And again, this area of the region A, that's pretty much, well, we'll have A like that. So this distance here, in fact, this is just the rotation about. This is just the circumference. Circumference. And this is the circumference where the radius is the, is the distance to the centroid which is R. So what we have is the area is simply going to be of the region is just it's a circle so it's just pi R squared pi times radius squared and where D is going to be equal to the circumference and where the centroid is all the way up to this point so the radius is R so we know that the D is a circumference it's just equals to 2 so to write 2 pi and then capital R. So that is the yeah is the distance uh, traveled by the centroid. So now the total volume, or is the volumes equal to a times d, which equals to pi r squared times it by 2 pi r. Or we could simplify it. This just equals 2. Put the 2 in front. Pi squared r squared and then capital R for the distance to the centroid. So there, that's the volume of this torus or this ring, which is pretty remarkable how we could solve it fairly easily just by using the theorem of Pappas. And in a later video, I'll show how you can solve this using integrals, and it's a much more tedious way to do it than instead of just doing this really quick way. Anyways, this is all for today. I hope you'll learn, like always. You can download these exact notes in the link below, and thanks for watching. And stay tuned for another math easy solution.